communication, another no-brainer, and we all know this, and I'm sure you, you, you say to, yes, yeah, sure, of course, communication you know, changes everything about communicating and vision. Of course, of course. Because change is moving to a different situation. You're not already there yet, so you cannot, you cannot grab it, you cannot, you cannot look at it. So you have to visualize, you have to communicate where you're going. It's about a dream, it's about a situation that is not already there. So you need communication. And you need to communicate about uh, where you are now and why things should change and what the problem is, but also where you are going. You need to communicate about all those um, different aspects of the change, about objections, about blockages, about solutions, about everything all the time. And also, if you don't know yet uh, where you're going, you have to tell people. Going into a change can make people very uh, insecure and they can feel uncertain and it can be exciting or too much of a challenge. So communicating, even saying, I don't know yet, that is communicating as well and it will uh, tell people that you are being honest and you're keeping them updated really and you respect them enough to tell them, I'm thinking about it, I don't know yet and this will um, give people some confidence. So communication all the time. Change is everything about communication. Five. This is a nice one because you see three uh, words in one circle here and that's copy, coach and correct. When your change is coming from the conceptual dream levels down to tactical, specific, practical, daily, how-to behavior. You need to um, use the, the interaction processes in a team or in a group or between people in the organization. And that is you need to work with um, the things that people copy each other. So you need to have your positive energizers, your change agents, and they will be the role models and the others are going to copy them eventually. The second interaction process is that people coach each other. So if I'm having difficulty doing it, you might coach me, support me, help me how to do it. You know, I find it hard to, um, to adopt this new habit. You know, we should pick up the phone within three times when it rings. This is our new customer service line. And I find it hard because, you know, to switch because I'm, I'm working, I'm focusing on a document and then I need to pick up that phone. And you're going to coach me and you're going to help me. But then, if I can't do it, and especially if I won't do it, you might correct me. Or the group is going to correct me, or my supervisor, or my boss. So the way to stimulate new behavior and to um, get, have it sustainable in an organization is copy, coach, and correct. And these are crucial C's to change success. Then we have to reach a critical mess. So we have come down from all these big dreams down to behavior and we're trying to do this. I copy the others, I coach some people, we correct each other and condition each other. And then when more people are doing this, you reach a critical mess of people adopting the new behaviors, producing different outcomes. And then you can see, and it's very interesting that organizations can reach a tipping point and that even the people who resist and who are not going to do it and who don't think it's important are also going to do it because everybody around them is doing it and people really need to belong to a group and do these things uh, in order to be successful in the group so if you want to stay you're going to adopt that behavior as well so a critical mess is essential and that means a lot of consistency you need to go on and on and on so the seventh condition of successful change is consistency. You need to keep doing it, keep doing it. And sometimes that's hard or it's not as interesting anymore as it used to be. And you have to stimulate people again and just carry on, keep doing it, reward them for doing it and consistently keep doing it. 
and then you will reach a true lasting change. So the seven C's are commitment, clarity, consensus, communication all the time, copy coach correct on the behavioral level, criticalness and consistency. And if you check on this framework every time that you're in a project, if you're embarking on change, whatever change it is, please check these seven C's and you will know what interventions are necessary. If you need to do some more research, some more influencing, this is uh, your chain of success. Okay, that's so nice. And then again, people will say, yeah, that is lovely, and I checked everything, but people won't change. You know, people resist change. They don't like change. And you can wonder if that is true. You know, first, at home, we all change. We like to buy maybe a bigger car, a bigger house. Uh, you like changes like finding a new partner, getting married, having children, big changes. You know, but also on a, on a different level, you know, trying your new iPod or iPad. Great, that's change. That's awkward in the beginning, but we do it nevertheless. So the argument that people won't change and resist change and don't like it is not true. It may feel awkward and sometimes they feel insecure, sure. But people are open to change. That is why we're still here in the 21st century and didn't uh, uh, you know, ex go extinct uh, after killing mammoths. We're still here because we are open to change. And our 21st century professionals uh, really like to engage and have motivation from within. So here you have it again that uh, behavior is much more, uh, when you can afford it, it's great to have your behavior coming from within as opposed to from outside, because my boss is, you know, um, there with a whip and he's saying, come on, you have to work harder. It's great if I can afford it, and a lot of professionals can, it's great to have the motivation from within, and I'd like to work hard if I decide to. So 21st century professionals are open to change. They uh, grew, grew up digitally, they like the technological uh, changes, and they're used to some kind of change, some extent, some degree, and they have motivation to do it. Maybe you um, have seen Daniel Pink or, or read the book that um, today's professionals, when you, you have your, your rent or your mortgage and you have something to eat and uh, you're climbing up uh, Maslow's pyramid, the next thing that is important and that will motivate you is uh, mastery in your profession, so getting better at what you do. That is fun, isn't it? That is fun. If you learn and you get mastery and you get better and better and um, it feels like a reward in itself and, and your confidence is, is growing. People like autonomy. They like to have something to say about their own professions, jobs, uh, organizations, do it in their own way. And they like to have a purpose. So that is another thing from his research, that people want to contribute to their society or planet Earth as a whole, but to do good, to go beyond material wealth, to go beyond strictly um, working in a machine organization and doing your little thing. They want to see how they contribute to a larger purpose. They want to have meaning. So these are very interesting points from today's motivation theory. And they are opposed to uh, this argument that people won't change. They will change. And you can unleash the potential if you engage people in the change. Because when you engage people, you're giving them a challenge to master. You're giving them autonomy and respect because you're asking their input and you ask them to take accountability, to take ownership, to, take, to, to have agency, to actually do it. And you give them a purpose. You give them meaning, you know, it's not just doing the job and then go home. Now you're, you're working towards a new situation. So you win the hearts and minds of people and you can get very effective change. And another thing is that you can start viral and with small change. 
So all change used to be uh, maybe top down with exclusive teams, you know, thinking about the change and then starting this in, in an organization as a whole. But today's change, when there's intelligence everywhere around the organization, not just in the board, viral small change can start anywhere, bottom up. It can be very engaging, things can be tremendously improved. And um, you, of course you have to align it with the, with the other parts of the organization, but it's a very effective change approach nowadays. So maybe if you start up this big campaign and a big project and say, hey, we're going to change with all 5,000 employees as of today, yes, then maybe you are you know, heading for unsuccessful change, lots of resistance, uh, complexity, it's not feasible anymore. But how about viral and small change in units and win the hearts and minds of people, have them think with you, use their energy, their ideas, and engage in change. So that way people will change because they love to have some mastery, autonomy and purpose. So 21st century change is really about developing a great place to work and to succeed in the global market and to have a good performance to innovate and to be able to do that you have to give people a chance to participate you have to give them challenges so they can learn and you have to give them meaning and purpose. And the great thing is that 21st century organizations offer all three uh, things that people need to be really motivated from within and to be willing to change and to be willing to think with you, to take ownership and change their mindsets, beliefs and even habits and favorite behaviors if necessary. So that is great. So I think that the organizations who are going to succeed this century are those who can actually offer engagement because everybody likes to work in a good team and they offer challenges because we like to learn and to, to be enticed to do something else and we're curious as human beings and who offer purpose and meaning it's not just me as a, sol um, a solitary contractor, uh, you know, selling my services to organizations and just making money. You know, a lot of professionals do that nowadays, but it's going to be less attractive because isn't it great what you can do with a whole bunch of people when you actually commit yourself to a great purpose? And this is how organizations can retain and attract great talents. You can offer them something that they cannot accomplish by themselves. So 21st century change is really uh, exciting, great times. So engagement, challenges, change and purpose. Keep that in mind. How do you do that? Bear with me. We have seven feasible steps to engage people in a change. I'm going to show them to you now and we're going to tell you more about it in the next video. First is assessment. This is about when you, you know there's commitment, you're going to check the clarity. Where are we now and where do we want to go? Assessment, then you're going to get a visual quantified profile of how people experience the current and the preferred situation or culture, which is this whole complex of beliefs and behaviors. Then you're going to add qualitative information. That is your third step. So you're going to add stories, examples, and you're raising awareness about this situation, where you are now and where you want to go. So this is the urgency that Cotter speaks about. And when you use this change approach, you're not having to do lengthy interviews throughout an organization and then lining that all up and, and analyzing it and putting it in a big report and it's too much. No, we're going to do this in feasible steps, in feasible workshops, within a framework. And it, the assessment takes 15 minutes, then you get a visual profile and we're going to add the qualitative information and the awareness and the stories in a workshop. And then we're going to work to raise engagement and consensus. Where are we now? Where do we want to go? Next, 
we're going to scan the future. This is the fifth step. We look outside and we see what is going on out there. What are our competitors doing? What is happening in the market? And this is how we do it. And then when we have the future scan, we're going to check back on our desired profile, our preferred situation. What do we need to confront those challenges, to overcome them? What is going to happen in the near future and what do we need for that? And then we're going to uh, customize our preferred situation. So we're going to make our dream and the vision that we all agree on, we're going to customize that and specify that from the conceptual level, from values and organizational identity down to specific behaviors. So we make it very practical, tangible, tactical. So we're going to see in the preferred situation, we have certain values, certain mindsets or beliefs, we have our capabilities and then some behaviors and the outcome or the effect will be this. And then together with all your stakeholders, all your 21st century professionals, we're going to develop a change program and we include everyone. So everyone is allowed to do their own piece, to look at their own jobs and in their change program, uh, we're going to define what to do and what to learn and what to solve and what to stop doing and what to start doing and what first and what results we want, what key performance indicators we need and how to stick with it. And then you have successful engaging change that we're going to do as a group individually and collectively. So these is the seven step framework to successful engaging change. And it's very feasible. And if you look at these building blocks, these steps, they can be done within, I think, you know, it depends on the organization, but from assessment down to the change program development, you could have it done within one or two months. And then it's just a matter of viral, small change, stimulating the new behavior, turning it into habits. And you can have a great, tremendous outcome and change in six months, if you like. So, this was the first video about 21st century change, and I hope you're ready to roll for video two. In the next video, I'm going to tell you more about how to balance four culture types, how to understand the six culture factors that really matter, and what workplaces actually need in the 21st century. I hope this video served you so far. I hope you have some ideas, you get inspired. You're going to check into that 7C condition framework of successful change. You're going to um, think about those seven steps and I'll come back to you uh, with more information about the seven feasible steps of change. It's not so hard, you can do it. Everybody has done it so far. Um, it's really feasible. So I hope this served you and I'm looking forward to your comments, your feedback. I am open to learn as well and to talk about this fascinating topic of 21st century change and what the, our workplaces really need. So please leave your comments below. Um, I'll keep you posted and we'll see each other again. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.